first use of a homemade tire rim forge. William Hovey Smith, 2016. I am the author of Backyard Deer Hunting, and we have been writing about knives for a long time, and here we're actually in a process of making our own. This is Hovey Smith with Hovey's Outdoor Adventures. And we are getting started with our forge. And we're going to do the first serious work in it. Now, I have filled the forge freshly with coals and they are just getting started. And very shortly, they're gonna be ready to work. They're, most of them have already caught and the rest of them are sort of getting there. It's working around a little bit. And we'll get everything caught up. Well, our charcoals are now ready. So they are getting to a good heat. Now the first thing we're going to heat is actually this piece of metal here. As you can see, it's bent in two planes. And we're going to heat it not to tempering temperature, but just to the point where we can work it easily on an anvil and pound it out straight again to put in a reinforcing strap. I'm going to put it here in the coals and cover it up and see how we can do. It'll be interesting to see just what kind of heat that can get to without applying anything else or any forced draft air. Did you notice our homemade charcoal is doing right well? Not quite all of it has caught, but very nearly every bit. Yeah. Yeah, you could cook on this, you know. <laughs> well, uh, you really wouldn't want to the first time. The reason is this is salvage stuff. It's had lead on it and a lot of other materials. So no telling <laughs> what it's got on it. Plus, it also undoubtedly has some residual volatiles, some VOC, some volatile organic hydrocarbons. And so these need to volatize off. But uh, after a few such things, yeah, you could safely put a grill on top and, uh, yeah, do a little cooking here. Now we can do this number. and work up the heat in a hurry. Even without having any draft coming from the underside. What I'm going to do is to get them up to heat and actually do some tempering tonight when I can actually see the colors. Now you can see the major elements. This, of course, is our homemade forge, a piece of salvage pipe, the base plate, one of the few parts we purchased, a galvanized two-inch pipe welded in here for an airline, and the airline, which you can partially see, goes back to a six-gallon shop vac over here. And that supplies our compressed air to get everything up to a real working heat. And so now, we're going to turn on the air. And these coals are going to get hot very, very quickly indeed. We're going to see how we did. I can't really tell the color, it's too much daylight. I didn't really get a good sizzle, so I'm not sure how the hard this is, but we'll find out. I'm starting another load of charcoal on the forge for the heating the second night. Now, I have the damper door all the way open now. So some of the force of the air is being dissipated. 
So let me close the door and let you see what happens. You see that instantly we're getting much more airflow through the charcoal. And so now it's going to heat up much more rapidly, no doubt about it. We have two small knives to harden, and I think I can get them started now. Cover the other blade. Here's the other blade. Well, that's just right, I think. Now this is a longer blade, and we'll see if we can work it. Take that blade and put it in a pan of hot oil immediately behind the forge. One more to do tonight, and this is the one we want to take most care with. Use it as a tool to pick up some more coals here. to make sure we get a uniform heat through all parts of the slate here. Well, I can't say that's a perfect heat treatment, but at least it's far better than it were. We'll try another type of heat treatment with a torch and see if that does better on these steels. Well, what have we accomplished with our first attempt at forging? This is a piece that belongs to a disappearing stairwell. And this member here had badly bent in two different directions. So we heated it and straightened it on the anvil and reinforced it, as you see, with another piece of straight steel. And so now we have all the hardware on it and drilled out for new nuts and bolts and stuff. And so this is ready to install. And after two years, get my disappearing stairwell back and working again. All right. And now on our blades. Once they were tempered, they looked like this. 
after I quenched them with hot oil. Now this blade had actually sagged a little bit as it sat here over the fire, and most of the fire is coming here. And that is reflected when I polished it because there are actually burn marks in the steel right here on this surface, right here on the edge of the blade. Now the blade was successfully hardened. Yeah, it did that all right, but it did pit it here. And also you see the strange structure showing up right here. So it's on this side, polished, and this is what it looks like unpolished. So this blade is now going to have to be reground and smoothed again uh, to remove this excess material. On this complex shape, I took more care to move this across the flame more uniformly. And there, we still do get discoloration of the steel, and we still do get some differential heating right here in the middle, right over this vent where it came up and where it rested for the longest. But the tempering did go successfully. So now the blades will have to be put on sanding belts and these superficial imperfections removed and then we'll be ready to go. We are in the process of introducing some 15 new to the world patterns based on ancient designs from Hovey's Knives of China. Now I'm also the author of a number of outdoor books and we have chapters in all of our books on knives and I made some very unique tools for practical bow fishing. So here are some of the titles including crossbow hunting. I also have a new series of business books under the Profit brand. The first of these is Ideas for New Businesses, How to Start Your Own Million or Billion Dollar Business, and this is one of mine, and here's a blurb about me and what I do. Now, knife forges typically have elongate fireboxes, and I have a problem with this one, as you saw, but we're going to attempt to solve it in future videos. For more information on my books, blogs, and more than 500 videos, you can go to my website, www.hoviesmith.com. Good hunting and good eating from the outdoors. Goodbye, and God bless.